سيرفيس اناتومي اوف ذا يورتر ذا ابدومينال بارت اوف ذا يورتر از ريبريزنتد باي ا لاين اون ذا باك اوف ذا بيشنت بيتوين تو بوينتس This is the spinous process of the vertebrae. We take a point five centimeter lateral to the spinous process of L2 vertebra. This is the spinous process of L2, five centimeter lateral to reach the tip of the transverse process of L2. Then we descend downward to this point. This famous point on the iliac crest, which is called posterior superior iliac spine. This is the surface anatomy of the ureter, 5 cm lateral to the spinous process of L2, to a point at the posterior superior iliac spine. What is the arterial supply of uh, the ureter? The arterial supply of the ureter, when the ureter pass beside artery, it take a branch from this artery. How? The beginning of uh, the ureter take a branch from renal artery. Then the ureter pass beside the gonadal artery, take branch from gonadal artery. The ureter pass beside the aorta, take branch from the aorta. Pass beside common iliac and the internal iliac artery, take branches from these arteries. <coughs> In the depths of the pelvis, near the urinary bladder, it take arterial supply from the blood supply of the urinary bladder, which is called superior vesicle and the inferior vesicle in male. Inferior vesicle in female replaced by this artery. What is this artery? This is the ureter passing from backward to forward to the urinary bladder on the lateral aspect of the lateral fornix of the vagina and crossed by this artery which supplies the uterus. The inferior vesicle is replaced in females by uterine artery and the vaginal arteries, <coughs> uterine and the vaginal. Each branch reach uh, the ureter gives the ascending branch and descending branch. This appear in this branch. Give ascending branch, ascend upward, and descending branch, descend upward. And all arteries supplying the ureter form a longitudinal anastomosis along the ureter. The venous drainage of the ureter runs parallel with the arteries and the drain in the corresponding veins. Lymphatic drainage from below upward, the pelvic part is drained by internal iliac lymph nodes, then common iliac lymph nodes in the abdomen drain to para-aortic lymph nodes. What is the nerve supply of the ureter? The nerve supply of the ureter, before we take the nerve supply of the ureter, of the ureter this uh, picture is very good for the arterial supply of the ureter from renal from gonadal, from aorta, from common iliac, from internal iliac, from superior inferior vesicle or vaginal and uterine arteries in female, for longitudinal anastomosis. Okay, uh, the nerve supply from the autonomic nerve plexus from above downward from the renal autonomic nerve plexus, from the aortic nerve plexus, from superior and the inferior hypogastric autonomic nerve plexus. The afferent fibers, afferent vein fibers from the ureter 
Afferent pain fibers pass retrogradely with the sympathetic fibers supplying the ureter to reach the spinal cord segment from T11 to L2. And this is very important in pain coming from the ureter, which is called the ureteric colic. T11 to L2. Applied anatomy of the ureter. First of all, ureteric stones are very, very common condition occur in the ureter. And actually, ureteric stone is not ureteric stone. How? Usually, the stone is the renal stone. And the small renal stone migrate and descend and impacted in the ureter. So usually stony ureter is a migrating stone from the kidney. A stone lower part of ureter here. The ureters on both sides of this organ, rectum. And we can put a finger, the doctor put a finger in the rectum and be the feel the surrounding structure. If one finger here and you palpate the pelvic organ, you may feel the hard stone in the, inside the ureter. Therefore, the ureteric stone in the pelvic part of the ureter can be felt by bare rectal examination, which is called BR examination. And the BR examination or bare rectal is the doctor put a finger in the rectum and they feel the pelvic organ, right and left structure, anterior structure, posterior structure, etc. Migrating stone in the ureter. Migrating stone in the ureter will reduce the ureter show high barbristalsis to push the stone and to overcome the resistance of the passage of the stone. And also, impaction of the stone leading to accumulation of urine above the obstruction, leading to distension of the ureter. Spasm in the ureter. Spasm, hyperbristalsis, distension of the ureter, will produce being called the ureteric pain. The ureteric pain is characteristic radiating to the same area supplied by the ureter. Being from the ureter, being fibers, passing retrograde with sympathetic supply to spinal cord segment from T11 to L2. And this area supplying what? This pain will be felt from the beginning of the ureter. From the beginning of the ureter in the belly ureteric junction. From the loin downward to the groin. Groin is the area above and below the inguinal ligament. And the pain may be felt in the scrotum or the corresponding to the scrotum in female, which is called the labia majora. And genitofemoral nerve, which is related to the ureter, comes from L1 and L2. Why it is called the femoral? It supplies the skin of the medial aspect of the upper part of the thigh. Therefore, your etheric pain may radiate to the upper part of the medial aspect of the thigh. Why it is called genito? It is called genito femoral because it supplies a muscle in the scrotum called dartos muscle and the cremasteric muscles. Contraction and spasm of cremasteric muscle during ureteric pain leading to elevation and retraction of the testes. Therefore, ureteric pain radiate along the area supplied from T11 to L2. From the loin in the back of the patient to the groin region of the inguinal ligament.
to the medial aspect of the thigh, scrotum, or labia majora in females. And along the femoral nerve, a spasm of cremasteric muscle leading to elevation of the testis and the retraction of the testis upward. Um, radiologically, how to know stony ureter in brain X-ray? We can visualize the ureter and the ureteric stone by brain X-ray, like this. This brain X-ray. Stones along the tips of transverse process of lumbar vertebrae. Stones along the sacroiliac joint and the of sacrum. Stones medial to the ischial spine. Stones along the course of the ureter should be ureteric stone. And this short plain X-ray just bones appear white and the gas in the intestine appear black. And this is a plain X-ray. Show stones along the course of the ureter are ureteric stones. The ureter can be visualized by dye. Dye which may from above or from below. From above, from where? We give the dye intravenous. The dye runs in the bloodstream. The kidney extracts the dye from the bloodstream and excretes the dye in the bilvical cell system. Then descend the dye to the ureter. Then from the ureter descend to the urinary bladder. You will visualize the dye in all the urinary tract. This is called intravenous because the dye is taken intravenous. Urography. Urography, graphy means take a picture. And uro means urinary tract. Picture to the urinary tract with dye. Intravenous urography. Or it is called the descending urography. Why descending? Because the dye descend from above downward. Why you say descending urography? Because there is ascending. If there is renal failure and the patient cannot excrete the dye from the blood, we introduce the dye from below by a caster. We inject the dye by a caster into the urinary bladder, ureter, and the renal pelvis. This is called the ascending urography. We can visualize uh, the ureter and all the urinary tract by this method. Abdominal ultrasound. And what is this lumen? And what obstructs the lumen? This is the lumen of the ureter. And the stone impacted in the ureter with proximal dilatation. Urine try to pass. The urine accumulate, 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 leading to proximal dilatation in the ureter. We can visualize the ureter only by CT scan. CT scan, and this is a stone in the belvi ureteric junction, at the junction of the renal pelvis and the ureter. We can uh, visualize the interior, the lumen from inside of the ureter. By what? By this oscopy, urethroscopy introduced from the urethra to the urinary bladder to the ureter. And even through the urethroscopy, we can grasp the stone and extract the stone from the ureter. Urethroscopy to visualize inside the lumen of the ureter. Um, the commonest congenital anomaly in the urinary tract. The commonest congenital anomaly of the urinary tract is this. Or the commonest congenital anomaly in the ureter especially. 
دبل رينال بلفيس دبل يوريتر This actually is a commonest congenital anomaly in the ureter and the urinary tract. Um, the blood supply of the ureter comes from where? During retraction, during abdominal operation, we may try to retract the ureter. Retraction of the ureter may damage the arterial supply of the ureter, leading to ureter without blood supply, leading to gangrene, perforation of the ureter, and the leakage of urine. Why this iatrogenic injury may occur? Iatrogenic injury means injury by doctor, by surgeon. The blood supply of the ureter comes of the abdominal part of the ureter. <coughs> Come from renal, gonadal, aorta, common iliac. The blood from uh, for the abdominal part comes from medial to lateral or lateral to medial. The blood supply comes of the abdominal part from medial to lateral. Therefore, during retraction of the abdominal part, think with me. You want to retract the ureter laterally or medially? Sure, retract the ureter medially because if you retract the ureter laterally, you will divide the ureteric blood supply leading to gangrene, perforation, and leakage of urine. The reverse in the pelvic part. The pelvic part take its blood supply from lateral to medial. Therefore, if you try to retract the ureter medially, you will divide the ureteric branches to the ureter. Therefore, the reverse in the pelvic part. If you want to retract the ureter, retract the ureter laterally to preserve the ureteric blood vessels. During operation, how to identify the ureter? The ureter is, uh, is like that. Narrow, whitish tube with the blood vessels runs longitudinally along the outer surface. And during an inspection of the ureter, you may, you may find, what is this? It moves. This is the bristelsis in the ureter. And if you put a needle and suck from the lumen, you will suck something yellow. What is this yellow fluid? The urine. As we said before, take care during the hysterectomy. What is hysterectomy? Hysterectomy is excision of the uterus. During hysterectomy, you should ligate the uterine artery. During ligation of uterine artery, take care from injury of the ureter. Due to crossing of uterine artery just above the ureter. Finally, the intramural part of the ureter is one-way valve. Allow passage of urine from ureter to bladder and not the reverse. What is the mechanism of this valve? The ureter pass inside the muscle layer, the intramural part, pass inside the muscle layer of the urinary bladder, downward and immediately, obliquely. This oblique passage, if the bladder becomes distended, it will compress the oblique wall the wall runs obliquely in the rear bladder this oblique passage during distension of the bladder by urine this will push the anterior and the posterior of the ureter against each other with obliteration of the lumen 
this oblique passage and here the urinary bladder becomes distended this tension here will push the anterior wall against the posterior wall closing the valve plus during micturition contraction of the bladder muscle during micturition to pass urine will squeeze the intramural part leading to more and more closure of the intramural part of the ureter therefore at the intramural part there is a sphincter one way valve called the urethrovasical sphincter depends mainly upon the oblique passage of the ureter inside the wall of the urinary bladder um, these are the most important point in the applied anatomy of the ureter thank you for good listening and good luck